And uh, it's my uh, pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, the uh, UNT College of Music and their admission staff. Uh, the UNT College of Music is one of the nation's largest and most respected comprehensive music schools. The faculty includes internationally acclaimed artists and scholars in composition, conducting, education, entrepreneurship, ethnomusicology, history, jazz studies, performance, and theory. Uh, joining us today to discuss the College of Music is their Director of Admissions, Joel Wiley. Uh, Joel uh, happens to be a proud alumnus of the University of North Texas uh, and is completing a master's degree in musical performance. Baritone, right, Joel? Depends on the so day. <laughs> He'll provide a brief overview of the music admissions and applications procedures, followed by a Q&A, uh, where you'll have the chance to ask questions. Uh, when our session concludes, uh, Mr. Wiley and a few of the current music majors will be available to answer individual questions in a separate music admissions Zoom room. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll be sure to uh, include that link in chat um, so you can switch over there. So with that, Joel, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jason. And thank you to all the UT admissions staff for making this event possible today, especially under these unique circumstances. Uh, typically, if you were going to come on campus and do one of these live preview events with us, it would always begin with a student performance ensemble. Because in our mind, there's no better way for you to experience who we are than to hear our students in action. Uh, so why we can't do that for you live today, we have the next best thing. We have a recording of our Grammy nominated one o'clock jazz band one o'clock lab band under the direction of Professor Alan Baylock. They will be performing for you Birds of a Feather, uh, which was actually written by our jazz composition and arranging faculty member Rich DeRosa. Uh, please enjoy this performance and a brief glimpse into who we are. <laughs> So there's a performance for you. Uh, not, of course, what we would like in terms of it being live, uh, but still you just had the opportunity to experience some of the finest jazz musicians uh, from across the world playing for you. That was recorded last summer. 
Uh, so in Jason's introduction, he referred to us as a comprehensive music program. In fact, we are the largest comprehensive music program in the country. Often we have people ask us, uh, what does that mean? What does it mean to be comprehensive? Uh, the short answer to that is it means that we do a little bit of everything in music. Uh, I tell my friends, colleagues across the country, I have the very best job. Um, and a typical year I get to travel the country in search of uh, top music students and scholars. Uh, but on a daily basis, even in the midst of COVID, I get to walk our hallways and I get to hear up and coming opera singers, world class British style brass bands, Grammy nominated jazz ensembles, concert pianists who just made their debuts at Carnegie Hall, electronic and new music composition ensembles, even rock and cover bands and so much more. Uh, we do just about everything here. And as you may have seen in that video, uh, our mission statement is that we are serving our diverse musical culture. Diverse musical culture with excellence, integrity, and imagination. Uh, we believe that we do all of the above and we continue to uh, our rich heritage of music making along with inventive new curricular options to fit uh, the ever-changing landscape of what's going on in the music industry, especially with the impacts of COVID. Uh, so just a couple highlights of some of the programs we before we jump into the admission proce uh, process. So for instance, talking about our rich heritage, uh, one of those can be felt uh, through music education. It's possible that many of you with us today are a product of our music educators. If you are not aware, we are actually the largest or most prolific producer of music educators in the nation. We have more active and re uh, retired music educators than any other program. And while it's great that we are the largest in that aspect, we think it's pretty impressive that we still maintain 100% job placement just about every year. So something within that area that we are proud. And we are all level certified K through 12. So depending on if you have varied interests, that degree at the end leads to teacher certification for you in music ed. Composition, our composition area is all encompassing. It features everything from standard orchestral composition, chamber music, but then new music, music and media, film and video composition scoring, uh, music for new media, electronic production and intermedia as well. Um, we started this year with a brand new program in music electronics. So as we will talk about in a second, everyone must pass an audition. They must apply an audition if they wish to be a music major. Well, we thought to ourselves, how is that for someone who may be a background like Billie Eilish, for instance? Uh, her background, her brother's background actually happens to be computer-based music and production. Uh, yes, of course, she's an incredible singer also, uh, but thinking about that type of student. And so we unveiled and we have our first incoming class this year, fall 2020, of music electronics students. So that is a broad category of music and intermedia through production-based devices within our composition area. Uh, we unveiled as well this year a new music minor for music majors in music business and entrepreneurship. So this is a program where we feel we can have our students impacted. There's courses in career development, business and contract negotiations, internships, and then we have an exciting new opportunity uh, for an MBA in music business with our colleagues in the Ryan College of Business, one of the nation's preeminent music schools, um, combined with one of the top business programs. So we're excited about that. It is the first MBA in music business of its kind at any state institution in the country. So proud of that, great opportunity for our students who are looking for different types of options in music outside of the standard performance or education tracks. Uh, of course, jazz studies, we mentioned this a bit already in seven time Grammy nominated one o'clock lab band. We are the first jazz degree in the world. Uh, pretty impressive there. We also have started doing some new things as well. We have a contemporary and alternative string program. Uh, that string program helps our students prepare themselves for studio and film recording. Our faculty member, Professor Scott Tixier, just played first violin on the new Lion King soundtrack. He's played on the last two Spike Lee films. Uh, he was featured in Netflix. So all sorts of things uh, that we are doing for our students to kind of change and mold with the world in terms of what's going on in the music area.
So featuring here on our website, we want to make sure uh, you're familiar uh, with the basic navigation. Under the admission side, this is what we're going to talk about, assuming the majority of you with us today are undergraduates. Uh, so you've got three basic steps that you will follow. The first, of course, is you apply to the university. Apply to the university. Uh, for those of you that are currently high school seniors or interested in transferring for fall 2021, so our next fall, uh, that application is currently available. You can apply either through Apply Texas or the common application. We have no preference. Uh, after you apply to UNT and you pay the application fee, typically within two to four business days, you'll receive your student ID number student ID number. That student ID number is important because it's what you need to move forward to apply to the College of Music. Now a question we often get is do I first have to be admitted to UNT before I can apply and audition for the College of Music? And the answer is no. You do not need to be admitted. You simply need to apply. Here on the bottom, I want to show you this as it just popped up here. Uh, we actually have a live chat feature. So if at any point uh, you are wanting a quick answer to a question, um, we have the opportunity for you to chat with myself or one of our admissions staff. And we also man this during busy times uh, where we have students on uh, nights and weekends that are here available as well. So if you have live chats at any time outside of this session, we're happy to work with you there. So your next step, as we said, you apply to the university, then you will apply to the College of Music. Yes, every student that is interested in majoring in music must apply separately and audition. We host our application through a system called Accepted. Accepted, it's also what we've used historically for our summer camps. Uh, many of the top music programs across the country also use this platform. This is where you will let us know uh, your specific area or the program to which you are applying. And then within that program, you can tell us your instrument or voice or electronics and then you will indicate um, the various information that we ask there from you. Um, as it says, this is your application for auditions, admission, and music merit scholarships. So clearly, uh, you are aware that the system this year, everything is very different for everyone. Any of you that are high school seniors, what we will be doing is hosting our auditions in a virtual format. So you will submit your application first to the university, then you will submit your application to the College of Music. And if you are invited for a live audition, you have one of three Saturdays for our undergraduate students to do your virtual live audition with our faculty. So that's Saturday, January 30th, Saturday, February 6th, and Saturday, February 27th. So one of those three Saturdays, you would do a live virtual audition with our faculty. Uh, we would send you information about exactly what that means, kind of go from there. So I mentioned if you are invited, some of our areas require something called a pre-screening. If you haven't already done so, we encourage you to click on admissions and then under auditions, we have our audition repertoire requirements for the undergraduate level. All of the areas listed here require a first round of audition or a screening. You submit a video and then our faculty lets you know if you are invited to audition. Those areas are classical trombone, classical voice, our music electronics area will submit a portfolio, all of our jazz study students, and then piano performance and violin performance applicants. So you can visit this page and it tells you every single instrument and what specifically we expect. For some areas, it tells you that there's a difference between the major that you are applying for. The majors in the classical side that we offer are performance and then what we call our concentration degrees. That simply means that it focuses on something else. Those concentration degrees are music education, which we discussed earlier, composition, and then the BA or the Bachelor's of Arts in Music. Uh, the BA has quickly grown over the last five years to become our most popular degree option. Uh, the reason for that is because of its curricular flexibility. That Bachelor's of Arts degree in music still requires an application, it still requires an audition, but all of the advanced electives in music are of the students choosing. So if you think you're wanting to take some music business courses, maybe some marketing courses, maybe engineering or math or foreign language, this is a great program for you. Uh, the other reason it's so popular, it also requires 18 hours of advanced electives outside of the College of Music. 
outside of the College of Music. So that's a way where a student could come in and say, you know, I would like to double major in music and business or music and pre-health sciences or music major with a minor in something else. Most of the minors across campus are 18 hours. And so you would have the opportunity potentially there to do a BA or a bachelor's of arts in music and combine multiple interests. So definitely good options there. This is for our classical students. On the jazz studies side, the degree is a bachelor's of music in jazz studies. So you will review this page here and you will look at your specific instrument or area and determine what our faculty are expecting you to perform for that virtual live audition. Again, for all of you that are high school seniors or transfer students interested in fall 2021, you would apply and audition now. And then under the admissions page and deadlines, you will see that our preferred deadline is Monday, December 7th, Monday, December 7th. So by that day, you will apply, you will audition, uh, apply, and then potentially you will send your information to uh, our faculty to review. And then if you're in an area that requires a screening, we would let you know if you are invited to audition live. Okay, so that's Monday, December 7th. Uh, if you determine that you are unable to do one of our virtual live auditions and instead you wish to audition uh, by video, that is an option. For most of the areas, the final deadline to submit a video is February 22nd, February 22nd. And then the exclusions here are classical piano and jazz voice. The deadline is February 1st. Okay, so that's a, a basic insight into the deadlines there. Now, important, I want to answer a few questions. And in fact, we have some FAQs for you here. Important things, we've already talked about some of these. Uh, yes, of course, you have to audition if you want to be a music major. Yes, you can, undergraduate applicants, apply and audition for more than one area if you would like to do so. If you have an issue uh, deciding between the two, maybe you play um, jazz trombone in your jazz band, but you're also interested in marching band and classical trombone for music ed, then yes, absolutely, you could audition for multiple areas. Same thing with multiple degrees. Um, we do require recommendation letters as part of the audition. Um, uh, some important questions here. So how do I apply for music scholarships? You will automatically be considered for music scholarships based on this application that you complete and based on the audition that you complete with our faculty. So there's no separate application. But it's important to note here, so we are talking specifically about those who may be interested in majoring in music. Well, what if you are interested in simply participating in ensembles or pursuing our music minor? No, music scholarships are reserved for music majors only. So important to know there, music scholarships are reserved for music majors only. We do have a music minor. Uh, that music minor, as it says here, does not require an application or an audition. And so we are happy to have the opportunity for students to come in, regardless of your major on campus, and pursue that music minor. The other thing that's important to know is, no, you do not need to be a music major or a music minor to participate in any one of our more than 75 ensembles on campus, more than 75 ensembles. In fact, one of our student ambassadors that's here with us today is Tyler. Uh, Tyler is a, a sophomore music education major. His primary instrument happens to be flute, uh, but he actually is one of our mellophone section leaders in the Green Brigade marching band. Uh, this year, um, typically I should say we march a little over 400 of those 400, about a third are non-music majors who choose to do it because they love music, because they want to continue marching and they want to participate in something else. So if you are someone that loves music, there's a home for you here at UNT, whether that's a music major, a music minor, which does not require an application or audition, or whether that is specifically uh, just participating in music ensembles or even taking some private lessons there. I have one last thing that I want to show you and kind of talk through here uh, quickly. So we have uh, our basic application steps and we will make sure that you get a copy of this. I think they posted it to the preview page, but if not, we'll get you one. This goes through everything I mentioned in terms of the application, the audition, uh, the dates, et cetera, deadlines, uh, kind of more of a concise nature here, but it also lists the different degrees 
that we offer, as I mentioned, but then also our music minors. So within our music degree, any student has the opportunity to pursue our music business and entrepreneurship minor. So some exciting courses here, such as music business, entrepreneurship, marketing, leadership, law and finance, artist management and touring, beginning digital audio production for music entrepreneurs. This is a really important one, talking about Billie Eilish, her entire uh, Grammy winning album was produced on their laptop in her apartment with her brother. So this is kind of how the music world is changing. Gone are the days of the brick and mortar studios with multi-million dollar recording equipment because it's just not sustainable. Uh, and so people are starting to record on their own devices. Uh, we also offer a minor in music theory for any student that may be interested in taking advantage of that. And then, as I mentioned, we have multiple ensembles. There's actually over 75. This is just kind of a sampling of some of our ensembles listed here. And there are other options for you as well. Um, that is the general information that we want to cover with you today. Uh, we're gonna spend about the next 10 or 15 minutes answering questions going back and forth between the Q&A, uh, questions that were asked there. And then also if anyone wants to answer or ask questions, excuse me, live online, we have the ability to unmute you and let you do that also. So um, Mary Catherine, were there any specific questions in the chat or in the Q&A that um, you would like me to answer? There's a couple, I don't know if you saw, I like tagged them, but um, some people are asking about double majoring, um, one specifically double majoring in music comp and jazz studies. So the snarky response I typically give people is I don't know, can you? Um, it depends on the student. It doesn't necessarily depend on us. Um, with our curriculum, we give you the opportunity to do so. Uh, the real question is gonna be how many hours of credit do you have maybe coming in from dual credit, AP, CLEP tests? Uh, how many hours do you have uh, that you plan to take maybe through summer classes or concurrently enrolled at UNT in your local junior community college, et cetera? So it is possible, but it's incredibly difficult. Both the composition degree and the jazz studies degree require eight consecutive semesters of their own curriculum. And so it, it would definitely be difficult, uh, an undertaking. Same with music ed and performance, although that's a little more common, music education and performance than uh, composition and jazz studies. But again, it, it all depends on the student. Yes, we allow students to have the opportunity to do that. Um, I see someone else asked, can you major in composition and minor in something else? No, the music minors that we showed you are listed there. Um, you have those opportunities to uh, apply for your major and then either of those two minors that we mentioned. So the music business minor or the minor in um, music theory. However, any student, regardless of their major, regardless of their instrument, can audition and participate in any ensemble. So if you are someone that is wanting to take percussion lessons, but you are majoring in trombone, you are welcome to do that. You could even audition for the specific ensembles. So definitely there's lots of opportunity to take advantage of things outside of your area. Uh, Jessica, who's here with us today, happens to be uh, a classical vocalist. She's a music education major, but I know that she's taken um, classes in our jazz studies area, specifically some of our vocal jazz ensembles. That's something that she likes to do as well. Um, so lots of different opportunities to take courses within the program, but there's no specific minor. Some there's other a, questions here. There's a question about um, not receiving their student ID number after applying. Um, I would just say check your email. Make sure that you have the correct email in that. Um, I don't and know if can, it's back up right now because of um, the circumstances we're in. You can always email us as well. I just wrote our email address in the chat. It's collegeofmusic at unt.edu. We can definitely help you with that. Uh, there could be a, a question maybe about receiving documents. Maybe if there's a fee waiver involved, maybe we're missing some documents. Um, my office communicates closely with Jason's. Literally every single day we message with each other uh, asking about these specific situations. So we would love the chance to help you individually. Um, if you want to email us, collegeofmusicunt.edu, or the other email address is unt.freshman 
at unt.edu or oh, say, may. yeah. Um, the admissions officers uh, are available via Zoom. I'll post a link to that. So you could even meet with one of our officers via Zoom uh, and we could provide that information that's available or let you know what your status is with regards to the application. Awesome. Jumping to the next question that I see here, protocol for marching summer tour of drum corps. Well, hoping that drum corps happens uh, in the spring this year, in the summer, uh, this upcoming year. Yes, it happens all the time. In fact, we have hundreds of our students that have done it. Uh, Tyler, didn't you march drum corps as well? Yes, he says yes. Uh, so that is something that's very common. In fact, the very last freshman orientation is typically reserved for our out of state students but it's also reserved for our drum corps students. It happens typically the week after finals. So that's something that's common. Uh, you would not be alone, that's for sure. You would be somebody that um, we are used to and we'd be happy to help with them. What about another question? Mary Catherine, can you see another one for me to answer here? Sorry. Um, someone is asking about how hard it is, um, this says specifically for clarinet to get into the music school, but just in general, the statistics on that? Um, again, kind of my, my typical go-to snarky answer. Uh, it changes year to year. Uh, it changes because music is unique. You will be studying one-on-one -on -one with someone. And so we need to make sure that we have the option for our students to have someone to teach them. For instance, all of our clarinet students study with one of our four full-time clarinet faculty members. And so we need to make sure that we actually have a faculty member available for you to play, uh, for you to study with. Uh, same thing with ensembles. Um, so what we usually say is each instrument and area is different in terms of um, the general statistics if you will. Um, some of those areas are more competitive than others simply because of the number of applications. Historically, we have more than 150 undergraduate clarinet applications, which is huge. Um, and then we usually expect an incoming class of about 20. Now, again, that could be 12 one year and 30 the next year. So it kind of fluctuates based on what's going on. How many of our students need an extra semester to graduate? Uh, they may be student teaching and not taking lessons etc. Um, percussionist here is asking about playing in the band or playing in an ensemble. It's actually both. You're required to do both. So our percussionists are required to be in what we call a large ensemble every semester. So that's going to be one of our concert wind bands or uh, an orchestra. But then you also have to participate in some of our percussion ensembles. And we have more than 12 percussion ensembles. There's lots of different things. So that's something you're required to do. Uh, jazz composition degree. Yes, Caden, we do. The degree is the same. It's a Bachelor's of Music in Jazz Studies. Bachelor's of Music in Jazz Studies. Typically the junior year, the student would designate their track in jazz composition and arranging. And the big change there is that it allows them to double up their private lessons on their instrument, but then also in composition and arranging. So it does require passing of an audition from the beginning on your primary instrument or voice. And then usually junior year, second semester of junior year, you would have the opportunity if interested to designate that um, composition track within the jazz studies degree. What about other questions that I am not seeing here? Um, there is a question about submitting a composition portfolio. Um, is, if that is required or is it preferred? So composition portfolio is required for either our transfer composition students because the composition degree itself requires eight consecutive semesters of private lessons and uh, coursework. And so we do require it for transfer students. We also require it for our electronics students for our electronics students. So if you are submitting an application with music electronics, so that's entirely portfolio based. Uh, the application does not give you the opportunity to submit a portfolio. Um, if you're applying for, let's say, euphonium with composition as your primary area. However, every student that's interested in music education and every student that's interested in music composition will audition with their primary instrument, but then they'll also interview with the faculty on our virtual audition and interview day. And so you would have the chance at that point to communicate with a composition faculty member, maybe to talk about your specific background, um, maybe to 
um, show off a piece or two of what you've done uh, in the past. So lots of different options there. Uh, but no, a composition portfolio is not required for someone that is por uh, pursuing a degree at the undergraduate level, incoming freshman, going from there. Other there's questions? A, there's a question about how UNT is handling live performances this year. Sure. So all of our live performances this semester, at least, it's still too early to make a decision for the spring. Um, all of our um, performances are going to be live streamed. So no physical audience allowed on campus. So that includes our student recitals, that includes our ensemble uh, performances, et cetera. The only exception to that would be Tyler and the Green Brigade who are participating socially distanced in the stands for home football games only. No traveling allowed to any football games this year, uh, but all of our concerts are streamed live online. Um, one of the impressive things that we are proud of, we were one of the first schools in the country to start doing live streaming um, Jason mentioned earlier, I did my master's here in voice many years ago. When I did so, um, my family back in Virginia and in Oklahoma and Texas, all over um, the world actually were able to watch me do my master's recital live online. And then we also do the same for our performances. So in addition to our live streamed performances, we have an archive of hundreds and hundreds of opportunities um, of performances to review there. Other questions? Uh, if someone is asking, um, they know how high school ensembles are divided into varsity, subvarsity, et cetera. How are the ensembles divided in a similar manner at UNT? So there, there's not a, a varsity. Every ensemble is, is different. Um, yes, there is a standard kind of um, ranking, I guess you would say, in terms of the ensembles. For instance, the Jazz Studies students, uh, the one o'clock ensemble is that top tier ensemble. Then it kind of goes from there. It has to do historically with when the group has met in the past. Um, then we have our symphony orchestra, and then we have our wind symphony. Those are typically like the top ensembles, if you will, um, for each of those respective areas. And then a cappella choir is considered that within our choral area, but all of the ensembles are competitive. All of the ensembles really are, are very different in terms of what they offer. I know many of our students that have been in top ensembles or the top ensemble from the beginning have actually chosen to participate in some of the other ensembles to have the chance to work with a different faculty member or to even play a different instrument, sing a different voice type, those types of things. So lots of different ensembles. There's not really a, a difference between them. Um, you could listen blindly, um, if you will, to our uh, performances. And it would be very difficult for you to tell the difference between any of the ensembles. And that's something that we're very proud of. Other questions? Um, I can't remember if you talked about this yet, but the minor degrees that we have in music. The minor degree in music. So with the minors in music are going to be music, business, and entrepreneurship open to any student. And then also the um, music minor in theory. So those are the two minors that are available. Uh, both of those are 18 hours. Any of the other areas, so there's no minor in a specific performance area, but any student is welcome to take private lessons to audition for ensembles or take courses in that specific area, but there's no specific minor outside of their primary, uh, what we call a concentration or area. Um, I see a question, percentage of students orchestral performance versus other types. I, Again, you know, that's a difficult one to say um, because we don't require our students to only perform if they are performance majors. And that's one of the favorite things that I, I say to people. They say, well, I, I don't want to do a music ed degree because then I won't get to perform. I don't think that can be further from the truth. Um, Jessica, for instance, is in our top choir, if you will, our acapella choir. This is her second year. Um, and she's doing that as a music education major. So any student can audition for any ensemble. Um, in terms of the numbers, performance majors, instrumental, of course, is going to be a lot larger because there are more instruments that we offer than vocal. So the difference there would be keyboard, right? So piano, organ, harpsichord, um, choral, vocal, 
performance and then instrumental performance. So instrumental performance is definitely the largest of those three areas, but there's two full string orchestras, there's a Baroque orchestra, and then there's six different wind or concert bands as well, and then tons of chamber music ensembles. Other questions? There's one about um, doing music as part of the integrative studies program. So that is definitely a good option. Uh, the integrative studies degree will not require you to participate in ensembles or anything in terms of our standard music application process. So you can add that as one of your three focus areas. Uh, for people that may not understand what integrative studies is, it's a degree that is offered through the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences or class. Uh, the requirement is that you have three main focus areas one of those focus areas must be a major within class. So that could be anything like media arts, it could be sociology, psychology, so on and so forth, anything that class offers. And then from there, any of the other uh, two options are completely up to you. So we do have many students that choose to have music as one of their focus areas. Um, but again, that's not tied to the College of Music at all. Um, they are welcome to audition for ensembles, uh, see if there are private lessons available for their specific area. Um, and then we have a whole nother set of courses available for non-music majors that are available, but it's not a music specific degree. So would not require an application or audition for us. Good question. Can you see Henry Jax's question? Jazz. Um, Auditioning for jazz studies as a percussionist. I'm not sure, Henry, that I understand what you're asking. Um, so jazz studies is not a BA. Uh, jazz studies is a BM, a bachelor's of arts. Um, it would require you, if you're doing jazz studies with percussionists, my question would be, is your primary drum set or is your primary vibraphone? because it makes a difference based on how you audition for us. Uh, you would have to also do a classical audition on classical snare and then some sort of mallet audition. So either vibraphone or uh, marimba um, and then drum set as well if drum set is your primary. Um, but definitely that's something that if you wanna follow up with us later on, because I'm not sure I entirely understand the question you're asking. Um, media production is not something we offer in the College of Music. If, if you're talking about media arts, then that's a little bit different. Um, if you're talking about our electronics degree, that's actually a composition-based program. Um, so kind of different things there, but as Jason said, after this, we will be going to our own Zoom room, which they've listed here. So we'll be happy to split up. You can even ask Tyler specific questions. You could ask Jessica and Mary Catherine. Mary Catherine is our graduate assistant, who also is a master's degree uh, seeking student in classical voice opera. So to give you some ideas there. Sorry, Henry, wasn't able to really answer your question there, but we'll be happy to communicate with you in the future to make sure we understand what you're asking. And with uh, that, that's our 10 minute warning, Joel, just to let you know. Perfect, thank you. I do see somebody asked about competitions like UIL. Um, so not really, not really. Uh, there are opportunities for collegiate ensembles to participate in various things, just like TMEA. Uh, in fact, this past year, our acapella choir was the invited honor collegiate choir, uh, one of the two, which is pretty exciting for us and for Jessica, who got to go to TMEA and, and sing on that stage. Um, so that is something that they can do. Some of our wind ensembles will audition for um, Midwest Clinic. They will audition for CBDNA, all of the other big kind of ensemble opportunities. Uh, jazz this year did have uh, the opportunity for our students to move forward and um, participate. Our one o'clock lab band last year went to the Lincoln Center and they participated in the inaugural Jack Rudin Jazz Championship. Um, this was, they were competing, it's Manhattan School of Music and Juilliard and all of the top programs in the country and we we're excited that they were one of the finalists uh, in that program as well. So there are some competitions, but nothing like you expect uh, in, in high school. Other questions here? 
Um, there's a question here about um, the university's commitment to equality and inclusion. I don't see, know if you see that, um, just how our admission process and retention statistics for students of color. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a few things that they've done. The first is right now we've moved to a test optional uh, opportunity. That test optional is what we're calling an either or. Uh, so they have the opportunity to submit one of the, thing, one of the other options. So standardized tests and or class rank or GPA and our university admission staff will review you on that way. The other thing we're doing is we're taking a deep look at our curriculum. Um, with that curriculum, what type of changes should and or need to be made? Um, for instance, one of the things we're looking at in the College of Music is theory curriculum, music theory and oral skills. Just because music theory historically has been something that's Western classical music doesn't necessarily mean that's right. So we're investigating those types of things. Um, our jazz studies area has petitioned to require all of our jazz studies students to actually take um, or to add, I should say, an African American studies minor to the jazz studies degree. Um, because they feel it's so important looking at the background of what happened in jazz and jazz studies. Uh, as far as retention initiatives go, um, I don't know if you're going to find a college that does more for retention for all students than we do. Um, this year we had 92% retention from freshman to sophomore year in the College of Music, um, which is something we are very proud of. Um, there's all sorts of organizations and groups where our students can uh, take advantage and uh, find mentors. We have a mentoring program with our students and with our uh, faculty as well so they can find people uh, that look like them, that talk like them, that have the same sort of um, interests. Um, and so that's our goal is to make it a more personal situation from the beginning. And that's just a, a short insight into what we're doing specifically in the College of Music. You know, the university is doing um, a whole lot more in terms of um, required training, Every student, every faculty, every staff member was required to go through um, various forms of equality and bias uh, training and microaggressions training, et cetera. Uh, I see a question here. Typically, two years of jazz majors or study studying with a classical performance doctoral student in addition to lessons with jazz professor or not. Uh, yes, so most of the jazz studies majors, depending on the instrument, are required to take classical lessons. Those classical lessons, depending on the area, are usually going to be with a doctoral teaching fellow. However, you are still working with the jazz studies faculty and going from there. So uh, to give you an idea, jazz saxophone. So if you're coming in first year jazz saxophone student, you're gonna be taking usually, depending on your level of classical saxophone, four semesters of classical saxophone, well, you're still required to go to the classical saxophone departmentals where you get to learn from and perform for Dr. Nestler, who's the coordinator of classical saxophone. Then you are also required to attend our freshman seminar for jazz studies students that is with Professor Brad Lely, who is our jazz studies saxophone in instructor. And so that's just for the incoming freshmen in jazz studies. So you do have the opportunity, you're working with a faculty member in jazz for your freshman year, and then you're going from there um, while you're doing your classical lessons as well. Uh, I know we're almost out of time here. Seating placements and orchestral ensembles rotational. Um, yes and no, it depends on the concerts. Um, sometimes they will give students specific so part placement um, or stand placement based on what they think is the best option. They do rotate students in and out based on what they are needing, um, but that's going to be a little bit different based on the type of student going from there. Classical and scales portion of jazz. Um, I don't know what your area is, Stephen. Every instrument and area requires different audition requirements. Um, so I, I can't specifically speak to that question there, but you're welcome to follow up with us later on and we'll be happy to answer that question about the jazz audition. There. A couple of people have been asking where the recording of this um, will be, if it's on the school music website or. Jason, do you know, I don't believe it will be on the college music website because this is a general admissions event. It's my understanding uh, that a week after it will be made available, I'm not exactly sure where. I assume it'll be on the preview website. Um, yeah, I'm just getting confirmation it is the preview website. Perfect, very good, thank you. Um, 
renting a horn or mellophone through his high school, do you need to purchase their instruments? In fact, no, we encourage you not to purchase an instrument without communicating with our faculty first. We have an incredible uh, opportunity for our students here. We have a very large and robust um, string repair shop, instrument repair shop, keyboard repair shop, and that also takes part. Um, uh, there's classes that our students can uh, take part in, I should say, as part of that as well. And so our students have the opportunity to rent instruments. Uh, there's also the opportunity, I'm not gonna get into this too deeply because we don't have much time, but you can adjust your uh, cost of attendance with our financial aid and scholarship office. You can increase that for the purchase or refurbishment of an instrument, uh, but it requires a letter from your faculty member. So the area that you'll be studying with to make that happen. So we're happy to talk with you about that individually. Um, right now, the university is not allowing any guests on campus uh, for a few reasons. Um, not to necessarily brag on us too much um, and knock on wood, right? I would like to say that our university administration has done an incredible job in terms of their planning and their preparation for COVID and what's going on in terms of our remote classes and our in-person classes. Um, yesterday, so weekly, the, the university posts a live COVID dashboard that includes active cases of our community. It includes those who were on campus for three days prior uh, to symptoms if they tested positive and those who what they call are having an indirect impact on campus so they were not on campus. Uh, we, uh, as recently as yesterday at noon, had 22 active cases. Of the 22 active cases between our students and faculty, only two of those were students that had been on campus within three days. So I think that's a testament to what our university is doing uh, to protect our students, to protect our faculty, our staff, et cetera. And so for that case, um, we are currently not allowing on-campus visits of any kind. We are doing virtual tours instead. So kind of a, a question there, um, moving into what we would encourage you to do. You have the chance to meet with us, a member of my admission staff or myself individually. We walk you through the admission process and a sample application in detail. Then you get to meet with one of our wonderful students like Jessica or Tyler, learn about their experience, watch a virtual tour and go from there. So that's something that we're definitely um, offering for now. Um, if things continue to improve and go as they are, there's the potential that later on in the fall or maybe in the spring live um, tours would happen, but you'll just need to continue to review our website for that. Um, how many, what does it say, virtual auditions? Joel, I think that's about it. We need to clear the room for the next presentation. Perfect. Um, Joel, thank you for doing an incredible lightning round. Yeah. <laughs> the questions, you were fantastic. Uh, again, the uh, uh, within about a week, the this recording should be available on the um, UNT preview website. Um, I have posted the links for both admissions officers and the follow up with the College of Music in the chat. Um, so we look forward to seeing you there shortly. Uh, thanks again for participating. Go Mean Green.